Hi guys, how are we? Happy New Year, happy 2020. It's crazy, we have a new decade, a new year, a fresh start. How are we doing so far? Hmm? Love to know. Well, of course I'm here at Latitude Talent Studios. Hello everybody. I'm here to talk about how to break into the modeling industry. I actually have been asked this most recently um, from someone at my gym and I was like really honored to be asked, which is exciting. It's really cold here in New York, but um, I have this coat on. Of course it's faux because I don't support animal cruelty. So we're not even gonna bring that up. Okay, great. So let's talk about it. Um, so I'm gonna talk about three tips on how to become a model. Nowadays, the modeling industry has really changed a lot. Hello, everyone. Um, oh my God, congrats, signing to Latitude Abdel. Good for you. So um, the modeling industry has changed a lot because um, you don't have to be 5'10 and a size zero, which is great because I don't know that many people who are 5'10 and a size zero because you have to think about who's representing our country and our people. And the bulk of our country is not 5'10 and a size zero. So that's what's great about the modeling world now is that they want people of all different shapes, sizes, colors, ethnicities, um, heights, everything. I mean, I'm literally 5'1". I know, everyone's like, what, you're 5'1"? And I'm like, yeah, I know. People think I look taller on social media, but no, I'm, I'm 5'1". It's funny. But I have a big personality, so it's fine. But I don't have a Napoleon complex. Okay, great. So um, you just want to understand that there's a thing called real people casting. And there's also a modeling division called print modeling. And with print modeling, you can, like, you don't have to look a certain way. You don't even have to wear makeup. Like, for example, right now, I'm just wearing lipstick because I wanted to give my eyes a break. You feel me? So that's what I'm doing right now. They're getting a break. My skin's getting a break. We just got some lipstick on. Matches the coat. We're all good, right? Great. So I want to ask you some questions before, like, well, these are questions you should ask yourself before you even go into um, the tips on how to become a model, which I'm going to go over. And if you guys have any questions, just comment them and I will totally respond. So just like, let me know. Great. So number one, you want to ask yourself is why you want to do this for a living? Like I ask myself this question every day of my life. Why am I doing this? What's my purpose? What's the overall mission of me living and grinding and hustling here in New York to survive? Because if you live in New York, it's not an easy lifestyle. If you don't and you want to, no, it's not easy, but no, it'll be worth it if you want it to be worth it. Great, you wanna get into print modeling. I got you, I'm gonna talk about it. So ask yourself why you wanna do this. Maybe make a list, like write things down. Like, why am I doing this? What's going on, you know? Um, so you wanna also ask yourself, if you do wanna do this, is this gonna be a hobby or are you willing to give up like things for this? Meaning you have to compromise certain things. Like let's say there's a birthday party on, um, on a Sunday morning, no, it's a brunch, excuse me. You have a brunch on a Sunday afternoon, but you have a shoot late on a Saturday. Maybe you're shooting a music video. Maybe you have a photo shoot. Maybe you're in a short film. Maybe you're on set. Whatever it is, regardless, you're working, you're acting, you're modeling. Okay. And you've got to be up really early on Sunday because, well, I mean, you're really tired, let's say, okay? And you have to like get ready for your brunch, but you have to get ready for an audition that's Monday morning, but your Sunday is compromised by the brunch. So you have to make a decision of, do you go to this brunch, which you can go to in the future and your friends should understand, or do you say, hey guys, I can't go, I'm sorry, I have to get ready for this big audition, or I have to get my hair done, or tweeze my eyebrows, or make sure I know my poses for Monday. Like you gotta make sure you do the prep work because honestly, it's not just walking to the room and posing, it's doing the work beforehand. And that's finding the job, that's sending the emails, that's showing up, that's having your face ready, that's having your body ready, that's being moisturized, that's you know whatever it is they're asking you to do if you're showing your skin, you gotta be ready. So um, you just gotta be willing to sometimes sacrifice some things, you know, maybe not spend extra money on something that's not really gonna get you further. Like, okay, I mean, Netflix is important. Like it's very important to actually be watching things that are happening in the industry, but maybe you don't need that extra subscription to something that you don't need. Like, do you need to buy a new hair iron 
for your life. Maybe you do for your modeling, but maybe you don't need to buy that smoothie every day or that coffee because that's not going to help you necessarily in the long run because that money can be used to save to get better pictures taken or to collaborate with a photographer or put pictures on your website. So you just want to think about like time is money. You want to be smart about your time and ration it wisely because we all have 24 hours in the day and you don't want to spread yourself too thin and get overwhelmed. Yeah. So, um, also ask yourself, do you have thick skin? Are you willing to hear no a lot more than yes? Because that's what the industry is. And the modeling act uh, industry is based on looks like that is what it is. So you have to be ready to like be told about your appearance. Like if they want you to dye your hair blonde and your agency is like, Hey, we think you would do better with the blonde hair, co uh, hair color better than a brunette based on the roles you're going in for then you have to be willing to change some things if if you think it's in your brand and you think it's right. If it's against your morals, then don't do it. If someone tells you like, oh, I need you to buy this pair of sneakers because I think you're more Nike than Adidas, then you should buy those pairs of sneakers because maybe you are going in for the roles that are better for those roles. You know, you want to be ready and fit the mold that's going out there. That's important. Um, and hearing the word no is gonna be a given like i don't know any other industry that hears the word no as much as the entertainment industry but there's a lot of numbers it's a numbers game you gotta audition you gotta you gotta keep putting yourself out there and you can't get discouraged you gotta stay positive you gotta develop some kind of like self-care routine i know it's like 2020 everyone's into that whether it's like meditation working out breathing carefully going for a walk whatever it is seeing a friend petting your dog whatever it is just make sure you're taking care of yourself because if you're not taking care of yourself you can't take care of an audition or a go see or a photo shoot so you want to make sure that you're like on top of that all right so now that i went over like some <laughs> housekeeping things i'm gonna talk about the tips that i have that i recommend on breaking into the industry all right now D-Ankle the Dean, I see you waving, hello. If you have any questions, please ask. Thank you, anyone, all right? All right, so number one is you wanna take photos. You wanna get comfortable in front of a camera. Not just in front of a comfortable with a camera, like me right now, like I'm totally comfortable. I'm also comfortable with humans because I've been in the industry a little bit and I'm like doing my thing. But you wanna get comfortable in front of a camera, in front of people. Because anybody can just stand right now and do what I'm doing. Like anybody can be like, hey, what's up guys? I'm talking to an audience. Cause I'm not, there's not actually a real human behind me or anything. I'm alone right now in the studio. So the point is, is that I need you to be comfortable being in front of a camera and then having people around you who are all watching you. And that's important because when you're on set modeling, doing an acting thing, auditioning, going on a go see, doing a runway walk, whatever it is, you have to be willing to just like be there and other people be there and be like, cool. like. I'm here, this is my thing. You're not gonna distract me. You're not gonna, I'm not gonna let you make me nervous. And honestly, they're not judging you. They're not there to like hurt your feelings. They're not there to pick on you. They're there to just do their job, which is to cast you. And you are the talent. So you have to just be like, okay, that's their job. This is my job, I'm gonna do my job. They're gonna do their job, great. So you gotta be comfortable with people and cameras together, not just a selfie or a self-timed camera. Cause, um, you don't want to like get on set and then be like, oh my God, like I'm not comfortable. What do I do? What do I do? Cause you want to be ready. You want to be ready for what they're going to throw at you. And you also be ready for things that are not going to be planned. Like for example, if you're told to, you're going to be posing, um, sitting down. Okay. That's one thing. And then you're told you're going to be posing standing up. That's very different. And it's, you know, you have to figure out what to do with your hands. I'm going to talk about advice and poses. Good question. TGX. So yeah, so you gotta be ready for that as well. Um, like curveballs or whatever, or hey, we're gonna do this indoor shoot and then all of a sudden we're gonna go outside and it's like, whoa, like how do I deal with lighting? Like, is my hair gonna cooperate in this weather? Like, is it gonna get frizzy? Am I gonna have flyaways? You know, you gotta have bobby pins ready. You gotta have like a little sewing kit on you so in case you get a tear and there's not a, a person that can help you with wardrobe. You gotta have powder on you at all times in case you're getting shiny. Like have that extra foundation in case mascara or something gets on your face, you wanna fix it. You gotta be ready for these things. Safety pins, bobby pins, um, little sewing kit with like a needle and thread. Um, Band-Aids, Neosporin, nail polish that's clear for pantyhose. If you're wearing them, it helps them from getting ripped. 
these little tricks. Toothbrush always floss even more so, okay? Um, yeah, I don't know about Atlanta. I'm not sure about that. You'll have to talk to the people in charge, but um, come back to that question. All right, so yeah, so there's that. Um, let me just look at my notes. Okay, yeah, so the whole idea of being camera shy, that cannot be a thing if you're pursuing work that's in front of a camera. I mean, obviously, right? But I still have to say that to make sure so you guys know that I said that. So I said it there, done, great. Okay, moving on. So, um, okay, now we're on posing. So you wanna know your good side and your bad side for the acting and modeling industry. Because if you have a say and you have control over a shoot, which most of the time you don't, but if you do, you wanna make sure you are working that camera, okay? So let's say they're like, oh, do you prefer a side? And you're like, no, not really, both sides are good. Then that's great, I'm happy for you. But if you know you have one side that you like better, or one side you don't like better, or one side you're just like, ugh, or you're like, oh my God. Like, you wanna make sure that you're accentuating that. So. On that note, when you get pictures taken, whether that's headshots, full body, three fourth, head to shoulders, whatever it is, make sure you're accentuating your good features. So if you have really pretty eyes, you should wear clothing that pops your eyes. If you have a curvy body that's an X, you should wear clothing that probably shows that off in a tasteful way, which I'm actually gonna go over next. So let me not derail my own focus. <laughs> go back so um good side bad side yes you want to have pictures that you're smiling with your teeth hey camilla smiling without your teeth like you want to have ones like this smiling one like this no teeth and ones that are like more serious you know like or like a little like open mouth like smizing tyra banks love her she always says smize and that smile with your eyes yes a girl that's five three has a chance guess how tall i am as i said before danielle i'm five one <sighs> crazy there you go you're welcome so um yeah you want to make sure that you're doing everything you can to make yourself look the best be confident and feel the best because you want to represent your best self i mean why would you not right so yeah there's that number two which is what i talked about before learn what looks good on you and things that you enjoy so your colors so for example it's cold out right now i'm wearing this like deep reddish color and i have this lip color that basically matches this pretty well you know and then underneath i have this shirt um it's like hello harry it's like a pink shirt it's kind of along the same color and i like this color so i think it looks good on my skin tone and it goes with my natural cheeks right so that's important to know about okay so yes so you want to make sure that you're wearing colors that pop so if you have brown eyes you're like oh my god what do i do i have brown eyes guess what brown eyes are beautiful just as green eyes are just as blue eyes are so don't be like some a lot of people have brown eyes are like oh, i hate my brown eyes everybody's brown eyes no you look different because you're uniquely you so don't don't mess up on your own appearance and never apologize for your appearance when it's like who you are don't be like oh i'm sorry i'm five one i don't apologize for being small I'm annoyed when I'm small and I can't reach things in my kitchen, but I have a little stool and I ask for help if I need it, you know, like there's that. So don't be like, I'm sorry, my eyes are brown. No, my eyes aren't brown by the way, but no, you're not gonna do that. You're gonna be like, hey, this is who I am. You should cast me. Maybe don't say you should cast me, but you know, you wanna bring that energy of, I'm cool to work with. I'm a positive energy. I will show up on time. I will be good on set. I will cooperate. And I'm going to make your product look good, whether it's earrings, jewelry, makeup, hairstyling, the park, medicine, toothpaste, whatever it is. So these are the things you should enjoy, right? So you want to think about the things you enjoy. So like, for example, I like Crest toothpaste. I also like Nike sneakers. Okay, so I might try to look at athletic ads or tooth commercial things because, you know, those are things that I enjoy and I'm obviously going to gravitate toward them. So if they hand me like a toothbrush on set and I have to audition with it, I'm going to be like, oh, yeah, I love brushing my teeth and I love Crest because Crest is great and it works for me. You see what I mean? Yeah. You understand. So make sure you have products you like, you can like rattle off. So if someone or an agency asks you like, hey, um, you look great. I'm really happy for you and your career. Now tell me five products that I can submit you for that I think you would be good for 
getting in the room for? And I'd be like, cool, let me tell you right now. Nike, Crest, Maybelline, um, H&M, and Swell water bottles. I just name them off the top of my head. Honestly, it's that easy. You don't have to have like a whole list of things. Just think of things you already use on your everyday basis. Okay, so another one would be like my vitamins that I take or my coat. And I can also do ads where I'm like, either you gotta know about your type, you know, are you gonna model, are you gonna be like in print ads for pharmaceuticals? Are you gonna be print ads for, um, I don't know, the MTA? Like, I mean, they don't really have that, but like, if they're advertising a certain part of Central Park and they want to show someone with their dog or like a, a couple on a date or they want to show um, like a young babysitter, can you play a young babysitter? I hope so. And if you can't, cool, that's fine. If you can play a young mom, cool. Just be able to talk about these roles and be like, yeah, so I can do those ads. I can also do these ads. I can do an Apple ad. Like, do you have more of a look where you're more into computers? Like, am I gonna see you on the Geek Squad at Best Buy advertisements? You gotta know about what you can do so that you're able to talk about it and you can submit for those roles properly. And you can tailor your portfolio according to that. So if I'm gonna advertise for Timberland Boots, I wanna have some pictures of me with Timberland Boots and my portfolio. Correct? Of course, of course, why would I not? Oh my God, you're the best, what's up? So yeah, so if you think you can do Nike ads, have pictures of you in Nikes in your portfolio. If you think you can do teeth ads, like dental hygiene, have pictures of you up close with your teeth showing. So have some close-ups of your headshots with your teeth out so we can see these things. So they, the thing is, nobody's gonna guess. Nobody's gonna be like, oh, I think I can see her doing an ad for Adidas, but I'm not sure. No, see that for me to even say that was like 20 seconds of my life that I'll never get back. And neither will you. So like RIP to those 20 seconds of our lives, guys. But more importantly, nobody's gonna take those 20 seconds and be like, oh, no. They're gonna be like, okay, I see her in this, 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 and this, and that's it. And you also need to be able to say, I can see myself in this, 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 and this, and this. So you do the work for them. So you prove that you're professional and you know what you're doing. Because otherwise, you're working for yourself. You gotta make sure you're, you're showing up to your best self, you're doing your thing, and this industry is all based on you. You running your own business, you're your own boss, and you wanna make sure that you're being the best self you can be, as I always advocate for people to be positive, goal setting, like all of the above, you know, all that. All right, so knowing different types of fabric that complement you. Do you look good in fabrics that are like patterned, or do you look good in fabrics that are more like one tone, don't do anything that's gonna to be too distracting unless that is part of your brand. If you normally wear polka dots and you're a type of person who might be on Marvelous's Maisel, then cool, your portfolio should look like that. I should see 50s pictures, I should see short hair, I should see like little dresses and skirts, maybe in a barber shop, you know? If I see you on, um, Uh, billions or something. I want to see that kind of vibe. You know, I want to see different vibes that based on your brand. So I can see that from your portfolio. I can immediately understand what you can do and what ads I can submit you for and what ads you can submit yourself for, more importantly. So knowing your figure, do you have broad shoulders? Are you more muscular? Are you going to have pictures where you're showing that off? You should show the pictures, you should have pictures that are showing off your best assets. Meaning if your best assets your skin, you should have a picture of you with no makeup on to prove that you can do makeup ads. Because with makeup ads, they most likely want people that have clear skin so they can put makeup on easily, okay? If you, um, you know, knowing what color, what color your skin tone is. So like, if you like do this, there's like a test you can do if you hold your skin and you can see um, what color comes up. You can see if you're cool, warm, all that kind of thing. And you can base on like your color scheme. So like get a few different outfits you can wear for auditions and go sees and just have those on repeat. Guess what? The people you're gonna audition for most of the time are not gonna, you're not gonna see them a lot, like frequently all the time. So you can wear the same outfit twice. Yes, Lizzie McGuire, you are an alpha repeater. And nobody's gonna know. Just wash your clothes and do laundry. Who cares? Nobody. The point is, I got like, maybe like 10 shirts that I wear to every audition. And it's good because those shirts work for me and it's cool. And I see the same people at the audition, they're like, hey Clara, hey whatever your name is, how are you? And we're auditioning for the same roles and she's in the same outfit and I'm in the same outfit because these outfits work for us. We know what colors work for us. We know what kind of clothing, like am I gonna wear a sweater? Am I gonna wear a tight fitting shirt? I'm gonna wear loose jeans, wear high waisted jeans. Like knowing those types of things to see what works for your body type, your brand, all that kind of thing. Like, are you gonna wear a headband? Are you a headband wearer? Are you gonna wear your hair up, hair down? Like you wanna make sure that you're showing these things up so you can like make it work you know and make them make yourself do more of the work than the cast people can do 
So knowing your body type, your skin tone, your colors, what colors pop for you, wearing those shirts to auditions, go sees, having pictures taken that represent the brands you can actually audition for, you can do print ads for, anybody can do print, as I said, print is about numbers, um, measurements and all of that, that's not to make you nervous, it's just to know like, hey, this is my body type, I can submit for these roles, that's yours, you can do that, because guess what, there's roles for everybody nowadays, it's not just about being one size fits all, because I don't know when that ever worked. One size never fit me all. Like, I don't know who who they're representing, but like that was a very small pool of people and I never understood that. Okay, thank you. So last point, number three, join a community and reach out to the people you know, all right? So this is pretty simple. Um, actually, it's not, I'm kidding. It's probably the most complicated part. So for this part, there's a lot of face, I know people are on Instagram like right now, but Facebook, oh, there's my fuzz for my sweater. Facebook has a lot of great groups for connecting with people like models and stuff like that. Photographers who are looking to build their brand. Like there's a thing called TFP. Does anybody know what that means? If anyone does, please comment. I'll shout you out. Anyone know? No, you're too slow. Okay, great, I'm moving on. TFP means trade for print. And that basically means that you can trade services for no money, which is great because you're both looking to get something out of it. So I'm a model. I have a photographer friend, let's say. His name is Bob. Cool, we love Bob. Love Bob. I'm Sophia, great. Bob, I know you're a photographer looking to expand your portfolio. I'm a model looking to get more photos. I would love to work with you and collaborate for Trade for Print. Let's set up a time and a date. Wow, that was easy. Now, wasn't it? Yes, it was. So you can go on Instagram, use hashtags, hashtag model, hashtag photos, hashtag photo shoot, hashtag NYC model, hashtag wherever you are, model, hashtag um, TFB, hashtag portrait, hashtag portfolio, hashtag people photography, hashtag nature photography, hashtag city photography, hashtag dental photography, hashtag Nike, whatever it is, athletic photography, whatever it is, okay? The point is, is that you wanna find what works for you and try to break into that market. So if everyone's like, oh my God, you should totally be a model for Colgate. Oh my God, I could totally see it. Cool, can you see yourself? More importantly, number two, okay, if you can, great. Let's look for those kind of things. So you're gonna look on the websites for things you can submit for that work. So you can join a Facebook community, Google them in your area, like NYC casting calls, NYC modeling, NYC um, trade for print photographers, NYC expanding portfolios, NYC needing photos, you know? You can post too in the group, be like, hey, my name's Sophia, I'm a new model. I like to expand my portfolio. And I would like to shoot from some photographers who are looking to expand their portfolio as well, TFP, whatever it is, and then you go from there, you know? But more importantly, you wanna make sure that you look at their previous work. If they don't have any, that makes sense, but they'll have something like with an iPhone. I mean, iPhones are great nowadays, but like some kind of photography where you can get a sense of like their style, how they work, what kind of people they've shot with, who they haven't shot with, why you're good to work with, why you can bring something to the table that neither of you both have, you know? Also thinking about concepts, like I've always wanted to do a photo shoot in an alleyway that's abandoned and like have that grungy look. Cool. So you should write that in the group and then do it. And then when you get the photos, there's a release signing process most of the time where like either the photographer keeps the original prints and then they just like send you the, the pictures edited or you can make sure you get them unedited. And there's like a whole idea of having a watermark where it'll be like da 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 photography, da 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 photo or a copyright. You can always ask for that to be removed if that's in the contract. That's all negotiable between you and the photographer. And more importantly, you can bring a friend, especially if you don't know them. I think it's really important to meet them in public first, like for a coffee, kind of like a first date in a way. I mean, this is someone you're gonna be working with intimately with a camera. And more importantly, you wanna make sure you're comfortable in front of a camera with a random person. Better if you know the person, but if not, cool, who cares? So, hey, I really like your work and your portfolio. I'd love to work with you. Can we get coffee sometime? Hello, Kevin. Um, can we get coffee sometime? Meet with coffee, ask them questions like, hey, what kind of photography have you done? 
Why do you want to do this? What kind of styles do you want to do? What kind of camera lens do you use? Do you do camera? Do you do your photo shoots outside? Do you do your photo shoots inside? Um, what kind of editing software do you use? Am I going to get the photos unedited by myself? Are you going to edit them first and give them to me? How many photos will I get edited? Three, five, a hundred, twenty. 2000, whatever it is. So make sure you ask important questions like this in the interview process. Email them, get social media handles, look at them, stalk them online, make sure you get to know who they are. You know, it's a collaboration. You both are working together for something that you both want, which is photos, expanding portfolio, and experience, especially if you're new to the industry. So you want to make sure that you're doing that. Okay, so more importantly, knowing um, if you get on set and you have to do your own makeup and hair, which happens a lot of the time when you're starting out, um, and sometimes they'll just have someone there to just do touch-ups, you come makeup and hair ready. Um, so you wanna make sure that you know how to do your hair and makeup, and you don't have to spend a lot of money. Honestly, you can like go to Sephora or a beauty um, counter and have them, they, you can be like, hey, Mac at Macy's, what's up? I need you to tell me my best colors for my skin tone, my eye color, my hair color, and my warm or cold in my skin tone. And they're gonna give you like a palette. They're gonna do some testing. And like, it's literally free. You can just, that's their job is to give consultations to people. You can also go to Sephora and get a mini makeover like for 15 minutes and get like a little like facial treatment and like we'll do a little thing and like just teach you how to do things. Sephora also has like free classes they offer on their website. Um, they're actually free. Yeah, I know. It's great. And no one knows about this, but now I'm telling you. So you are welcome. So it'll just be like, hey, like learn how to do contouring, learn how to do a basic foundation, learn how to do eyeshadow. Men, this doesn't apply as much, but it does because you do need to do foundation most of the time. And nowadays, like hair, I mean, I need to learn more about my hair. Like if you can, let me know because I know where my, where my makeup. So if you can, shoot me a DM. But um, yeah, so that's important knowing makeup, knowing what works for you, and um, more so, practicing your posing. What do I do with these things that are right here? My hands, oh my God, crazy, what is this? Yeah, you gotta know what to do with your hands. Hands are awkward, they can be awkward, they don't need to be awkward, but they can be, because if I'm sitting right now, I probably have more groundingness, groundedness, I'm more grounded, you get what I'm saying. Sitting down, when I stand up, it's like, oh my God, my limbs, they're like just here, chilling. Like I'm like a T-Rex, you know? We don't want that. We don't want you to look awkward. We wanna have bent joints. We don't wanna have straight arms unless that's part of the look. We wanna have a bent joint. We wanna accentuate our curves, our lines, knowing if we like our left side better than our right side knowing if we should put our chin down in front of a camera, knowing how to look at the camera, looking alive. Of course, RJ Lewis photos, I got you for the posing. So this is important. Now, as much as people wanna say this is selfish, honestly, it's not. If you're a model, your product is you. If you're a water bottle, your product is the water bottle. If you're a pen company, if you're Staples, your product is pens. So you wanna make sure that you know your product, which is knowing yourself and knowing how you look on camera. Okay, because the worst thing that could happen is that you have a photo shoot, you think it goes really well, and you get the photos back, and you're like, oh my god, what was that? What happened to me? Did I wake up? Was I alive? Was I have a beating heart? Where was my pulse? You know, you want to make sure you look alive. More importantly, but make sure you know how to pose. So you get in front of a camera, get in front of your mirror at home, full length, cabinet drawer, cabinet drawer, cabinet like medicine cabinet, whatever it is, and look at yourself and see like, is this my bad side? Is this my bad side? Do I have a bad side? Do I have a good side? Whatever it is. Okay, and then practice the posing. Like, do I look better with my feet apart? Or do I look better with my feet together? Do I look better straight on or the little curve and accentuating a curve? Okay, what about, what about a behind the, like this kind of pose, like a looking like that, you know? Like, is this side better? Or is this side better? You know what I mean? Just knowing those type of things is important. Um, playing with levels. I don't know if you guys ever watched, this is a funny show, America's Next Top Model, but I used to love that show with Tyra Banks. And um, she talked about like different frames and you wanna have diversity, right? So when you look through the thumbnails of the pictures when you get them back, you wanna see that it's not just like all the same where it's like, because that doesn't look good. That doesn't look like you know what you're doing. And even if you don't know what you're doing, you can fake until you make it, right? So. You wanna, you wanna pose and you wanna see, like, can I play with levels? You know, can I get on the ground?
Can I get on the, can I just stand up? Can I just do cool things with my hair? Small movements, you know? And then you can do big movements. These are all important. Hello, 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 any more questions? Um, I already went over if you're not tall, twice. So look back. Um, yeah, so you wanna make sure you know how to pose, get comfortable in front of a camera, have your friend just take photos of you. And honestly, I know this is gonna be awkward, but I don't care. I need you to take photos in front of humans. Like, if you're uncomfortable in front of a camera, go in a populated place and have your friend, who's your best friend, take your iPhone, just for fun to get you comfortable. Be like, hey, can you take some photos of me over there? People are gonna look, people are gonna be like, oh, is she famous? Oh, what's going on? Oh, whatever, who cares? This is you building your brand, this is you getting comfortable in front of a camera, and you need that. That's important, okay? So, number one, take photos and get comfortable in front of a camera with a human. Number two, learn what looks good on you, things that you enjoy, things you could actually model for. And number three, join a community and reach out to people you know. All right, that's all I have for today. Thanks for tuning in. And we started a little late. I think I went a little over, but I was a lot of information. Um, yeah, so let me know if you have questions. This is Latitude Talent Studios. They're the best. Okay, bye.